Now we're watching the tropics closely. Today is a landfall anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Y'all remember how bad that was? Not only was it a terrible hurricane, the government let them down when it comes to getting help afterwards. It was very devastating. I was actually in the army, so it was war at home and war abroad for me, so it was very confusing times. But God bless all of you that dealt with Hurricane Katrina. It was awful. Everybody piled up by the Superdome. It was a very sad event. And they fixed the wall that broke on the levees with the same material. Last year was the anniversary of Hurricane Ida. I'm sure all y'all in Louisiana remember that one as well. And we're seeing about the same path that we're seeing with the Euro of this next wave, Invest 91L. Matter of fact, I'm showing there's multiple locations to watch. A hurricane Ida came way down here by the Caribbean, just like pretty much what the GFS has been trying to hint at for the longest time, still showing it could form into the Western Gulf, and we could get a front-induced low forming in the Northern Gulf as Invest 91L makes his way towards the Bahamas. The path from Hurricane Katrina came just like what we're starting to see now with Invest 91L. It's still too far to know whether it's going to go west or east when this cold front hits it, so we do have to take it one day at a time, but Euro is starting to hint that there is possibilities, and it's not just the Euro. Plus, we're on 58 days with no tropical name storms in the Atlantic hurricane season. Tomorrow, makes us tied for second in the record. And if it Invest 91L stays a tropical depression and not a tropical storm, we will get the record in 61 days for longest gap between named storms. And this is starting to get very concerning because the Euro is starting to hint at yesterday that this wave could make it towards the Bahamas and go towards Florida very much a hurricane. Matter of fact, when you look at the control member from the Euro, you can see that it was depicted not only go towards Florida, but go towards Miami and carry straight down Florida, still being a tropical storm in the Northeast. Now remember this shot, because this is still showing a possibility today. Plus we have that serious storm coming to the Ohio Valley for today and bringing hurricane forest winds with chances for tornadoes for Northern Illinois. And it has shown a lot more strength today. Hey everybody, good afternoon to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Happy Monday to all of you. And I'm gonna give you all the updates that we have so far on what's going on in the tropics, as well as the severe weather for tonight. Now you can see in the spaghetti models, the Invest 91L is at 50-50. It's still showing it's gonna make a westward push. And the weaker it stays from not only this unprecedented shear from this upper level low that's in the Atlantic, also the dust. So the longer it stays weaker, the more west is going to go. If it intensifies, it will pull itself to the north. But it's literally 50-50 still. It's still too far away. It didn't even really form yet. But it is getting hit with that shear, and Invest 92L is getting hit with the same shear. So I wouldn't expect too much of an Invest 92L. I think our main importance is Invest 91L. And GFS and other models are still hinting that we're either going to get a front-induced low in the northern Gulf, and this Caribbean wave could still form by western Gulf of Mexico. Right now, as of this morning, Invest 91L is at 34 miles per hour winds, moving west at 8 miles per hour. It is getting hit with a lot of shear, and it's hard for it to keep its surface low, get its center, so that's why it's not becoming a named storm. And if we don't get one tomorrow on this, we will be tied for second in history. So as we take a good look at the upper troposphere, you can see we have a big upper level low in the tropical Atlantic, and this is bringing around and putting shear against Invest 91L, and on a wraparound, it's putting shear on Invest 92L. So this is causing a lot of problems, but keeping this weak, that's why it's showing it will make that western push, because the weaker it stays, the more west it will go. And you can see on the lightning strikes that is it's a lot stronger than any of these waves coming out. We actually have lightning building up in this upper level low. And you can see all the lightning strikes happening in Ohio Valley now. Now later this afternoon, this big cyclone that's in Canada will wrap around, bring all this cold air, and it will go against all this very strong dew points, very high 70s, and it will be a nasty line of severe storms. And we are showing very strong winds. But you can see right here from your shear that all that shear is hindering Invest 91L at the moment. And that is some strong shear. This is actually unprecedented amount of shear in the tropical Atlantic. This upper level low is doing over 80 knot winds 
of shear against this system. So it will stay weak because of that shear as it makes that westward push. Now Invest 92L is at 10%. It's just gonna fuse out. It's not gonna do much. It's getting a lot of shear. Over here in the Caribbean wave, it is down to 20% in the next five days. Euro shown is going to the Eastern Pacific. GFS and a couple other models is showing it could still form right here by Northern Mexico right before landfall. And we still get a front induced low in the Gulf. But Invest 91L, this is gonna be the main feature to watch for a while. And this disturbance is forecasted to move slowly towards the west and then west northwest at five to 10 miles per hour. Now the next 24 hours, according to National Hurricane Center, you can see we do have a piece of the wave that is going past the Yucatan and either going towards Texas or Northern Mexico. I'm still showing that could be some formation. While we have our Invest 91L just sitting here, and once you go 48 hours, you can see the high pressure did expand out. Still got that piece of tropical wave over to Yucatan and it's making its way to the west. Once you go 72 hours, you can see that the high pressure expands out. That would push this west, but keep it pretty close to the islands. And you can also see this piece of tropical wave that's over the Yucatan. The high pressure expands out, and instead of Texas, it would more likely go towards Mexico. Now, it's always been forecasted to turn. It always showed a turn at some point. We don't know if it's gonna turn early in the Bahamas or if it's gonna go further towards Florida and turn or maybe even go even deeper. I'm still showing all possibilities are still on the table today. Now, one of the questions that's on our mind is, is this gonna form? You can see all the precipitation, but you can see the dry air that does move with it. Then maybe as we get towards September 4th, as it gets closer, whether it goes west or east, you can see the winds are pushing to the west. But the cold front comes down and pushes it to the east. These cold fronts are very famous for bringing upper level lows, which brings a deep trough, pulling it on a high ridge to the east coast. And yesterday, it didn't show that that cold front was coming down so far. And that's why it showed a good possibility of it coming down towards Florida. Plus, the precipitation from the Caribbean wave goes around Mexico and comes into our jet stream for the southeast and it does do a block. That's what it showed yesterday. Now the control member for today with the Euro shows in five days, it will still remain weak, a lot of shear hitting it, but it will strengthen up and move its way towards the Bahamas, but now it's showing it possibly go out to the east for today. See how it does that low stall? That's where it gets hit with that cold front. So it still can do many things. It's still too far to be sure. It is showing it does strengthen up to a very strong storm, a 952 out there. So it always shows strength. We just need to know if this cold front is going to be hitting this storm or if it's going to be okay and it's going to go out to the east. Because as you look at all the possible cyclone locations this morning, you can see everything in the next seven days as it goes towards Bahamas. But you can see that the one that we showed yesterday going over Florida is still a possibility for today. Going straight down Florida just like it showed yesterday. So until that ensemble leaves the group i'm not going to feel comfortable because that is still an option is still at play although it is favoring a little further to the east you can also see this on a possible cyclone locations with the euro that it does favor a lot of potential growth right in this region but it still has other possibilities where it could still go west and still go down Florida, maybe even get into our Gulf. So we do need to keep a close eye on this because five days away is going to change, nevertheless, something seven or eight days away. And Euro showing that just once yesterday for the first time was a little concerning because Euro is very accurate. I'm happy to see this morning is showing it going away. Let's see what the 12Z shows later. The strength intensity is still a 50-50, which changes where the path is going to go. Half of them is showing it will stay a tropical depression, a tropical storm. It will at least be a tropical storm in the next 72 hours. So it'll be very close to tying first place for the longest gap without a named storm, but it is predicted to be tropical storm Danielle soon. But you can see how the other half shows it will be towards a Cat 1 or even a Cat 2 hurricane. It is still not known if it's going to stay weak and travel west or strengthen up and curve to the east. Because the update shows the same thing. 
It can still stay a tropical storm, a strong tropical storm, and it still shows it can go up to a hurricane. It's even bringing where it has more potential to strengthen. Now this right here, this far out this morning on today's models shows it will be in the Atlantic. But like I said, we don't know what's gonna happen past the next 72 hours. Well, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this and see what all the deterministic models are trying to hint at. Euro is shown on a 500 millibar cyclonic vorticity. It does still strengthen it up very strong, still curves out to the east. Cold front is coming to block it and upper level low trough is gonna give it problems. The GFS is showing almost the same thing, a lot more of a wobble to it but it still shows it will curve to the east, getting hit with this cold front. And it still shows that Caribbean wave right around the 5th could form up still in the Gulf and go towards northern Mexico. And it's not just the GFS that sees that. The Canadian model is also agreeing that it does strengthen up very strong and it will start turning to the east. The stronger it gets, the more eastern and northern it will push. But it gets very strong, even does a little break right there and remember Canadian is the one that showed that stall yesterday but Canadian is showing that it will go eventually to the east but you can see with the GFS as that's starting to go to the east if it goes to the east that we do get something in the western gulf as well as the eastern pacific still showing it's going to be a hurricane somewhere towards Baja California somewhere towards Mexico that's showing true with the euro as well and the nav gym is showing the same thing you have the system going towards the Bahamas, 91L, and it's not showing a sharp turn like everybody else. While well, you have that next system in Eastern Pacific and something growing on the Western side of the Gulf of Mexico. The Icon model, which is a great model, usually it shows the next five, maybe, maybe up to seven days of what's going on. And it's seeing multiple times that we could get a front induced low in the northern Gulf of Mexico right around the 31st and the 1st of September. So we do need to watch these cold fronts. They are famous for bringing front-induced lows, while the next system goes straight towards Bahamas. And that is the Zero Z update. It's showing it's not making that eastern push. It's going to make that western push. Even the 6Z this morning, that's why I'm waiting for all these updates this morning, is still showing that we're going to have a front-induced low right off the coast of Tampa, right in the northeast Gulf of Mexico, and we could get a front-induced low, and something could come out of that. So we do need to watch that. At the same time, you see it is showing that that storm is on its move on the same path that it saw before. Now, I will keep you updated on the tropics. You know I will. I want to see what happens with the 12Zs today on all these model deterministics. And if you don't know, 12Z and 0Z is a two-times-a-day meteorologist all around the world puts up these weather balloons around the same time to get the best data that goes into these models. So we'll see what the 12Z shows. Early this morning, we're seeing an eastern push. Later this afternoon, we could see a western push. It's still too far to know for sure. We just need to keep our eye on it closely and see what the updates are and follow the trends. We still have this big threat for today, and it is a tornado threat. We have it for northern Illinois and northern Indiana as well, a big 2% and the wind has grown. You have a big slight risk in all this yellow, you have 30% chance in all this red, and you have significant chance for winds in all this black as well. At least 75 miles per hour winds coming with it. Now that's wind gusts, but 75 mile per hour winds is like a Cat 1 hurricane on land. So when you look at higher resolution rapid refresh, you see you get some storms built up for Southern Missouri, for Kentucky, Tennessee, but once you go to about 5 p.m., then you start getting these cells that's coming through Illinois. And these are some very strong cells bringing a lot of damage and winds with it. Then it grows into Michigan by 7, by 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Very strong storms coming through for tonight. So when you check and see what's going on with the wind gusts, you can see it, it is bringing almost 80 miles per hour wind gusts with this system as it comes through. Checked another run a little bit later. That's why I was waiting to see what's going on with these winds. And now it's trending over 80 miles per hour wind gusts coming with this system as it comes through. And the 80 miles per hour wind gust is right here for northern Illinois, right where you have that tornado threat. I checked the 12Z once again, and then it's showing the same winds coming through, stretching into Michigan as well now. And we're talking high 80s once again 
coming with this system. And that is 50s and 60s going across Michigan. I checked the next one, it just keeps growing and growing. Right around 5 p.m., it's showing that Michigan, right by Detroit, could get 90 miles per hour wind gusts. So every time I refresh this and check the newest run, it shows more and more winds coming with this. Please be careful with this storm tonight. It is showing a lot of dangerous winds. So let's check the latest run. The latest run so far is showing right around 5 and 6 p.m. It really kicks off some very strong winds on these cells. This one right here is showing 45 miles per hour winds. And this isn't your wind gust. This is 10 meter winds. So I think what is seen right there is a possible growth of a tornado for Northern Illinois. As you go to 7 p.m., it still holds those 40 miles per hour winds with these storms as it comes through. 8 p.m., it grows even stronger. Now you're seeing 60 miles per hour sustained winds in the lakes coming from these cells flying across all the way to Michigan. 9 p.m. is still there, a very nasty front line of storms. And you can see with the winds that it's still bringing a lot of nasty winds coming with this system. So far, it shows that strong cell is over the lake. The lake will help intensify it. That's where the worst winds are. Everybody else still has some very serious winds but the winds has been all over the place. So whether it's gonna be Illinois, Indiana, Southern Michigan, it's too hard to tell. This is a model deterministic and this isn't exactly how it's gonna play out, but it's pretty close. In Michigan, I know you've been through a lot. So it starts right around 7 p.m. Some of these cells starts picking up some very strong winds, but it's showing right around 8 p.m. You could get some cells passing through with 60 miles per hour winds on them. And we're talking about some nasty little cells that is popping through all through Michigan, a big line coming all evening. And as you keep on going, you can see it does weaken down a little bit, but it does have some nasty little winds with these cells. The peak showing around 8 p.m. for Michigan. But you can see after it goes across Michigan, Illinois, you're gonna get a nasty band of storms for Northern Arkansas, Missouri, Kentucky. Then after it comes down, it's really gonna blow up around two o'clock in the morning. And I have this on high resolution rapid refresh, but I have it on the 18 hours, which is way more accurate than looking at the 48 hour run. The 48 hour always changes. But God bless you all tonight. Keep you and your family safe. This is going to be a strong wind event. Probably get a lot of power outages as well from broken trees from the winds. So just be safe. Be careful. Stay inside. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with love and kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments, to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, 
and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. May God bless you and protect you and your families this evening as y'all go through this ordeal. I pray the best for every single one of you. God bless you. All power. All glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father. And bless the Lord, for he has shown great mercy to all of us sinners. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you all.